now you want to find all matches here today. Now, yeah, let us say there are k such wild card characters. Yeah. Now, so there are two versions, right? One is static where t and p is are given, the other is a data structure question where t is given and p is sort of online. If we do not have this wild card, then it is a standard string matching problem, right? And what kind of running time do we know here for the standard one? O of m plus n, right? So, with no wild cards. And what about here? Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, O of n pre processing and O of m query time. This is without wild cards, right? And with wild cards, what do we know here? Let us let us for now again only assume the pattern has wild cards. I mean you can also generalize the text having wild cards, but let us now assume only pattern has wild cards. So, L log is are you saying about L log? Exactly, right. So, you know this N log N and here is the question here, okay. This is what we want to understand. This, this is what Cole's algorithm does it. It addresses this question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here also, let's think of a naive solution using suffix trees. So what I can do is the following. So let's see my alphabet. Yeah. Now, can you use suffix trees? So, there is one solution which will do, it will build a suffix tree, then can you convert it into multiple exact string matching? I am looking for something simpler and brute force. You do not know anything about this new algorithm, you do not know anything about coal. All you know is how to do exact string matching. Yeah, that is in my order and pre processing. And then Okay, exactly. Yes. How many child nodes are there potentially in the suffix tree? Suffix tree for every node, there are edges going out of them with some labels, right? What are the labels?
Yeah, in the in the worst case, how many children can a node have? Sigma, right? Because each edge has a character as a label. So I have sigma different characters, so that's a possible number of children. Right? You could also have substrings. Yeah, but if you take the uncompressed simple surface tree, you have sigma possible children. So, I look for uh, from my P1, then I branch into all possible things, and then I look for P2, branch into all possible things in each one of them, and so on. Another way to think about, um, so how much time will that take? So, how much time will this take? It will be order of size of P1 plus sigma into size of P2 plus sigma square, right? Because, you know, for each of this, there, there might be a sigma branches. So, it will be sigma square into size of P3 and So this is one possible algorithm which sort of does this exact string matching. Another simpler way of thinking about this is for each of this character, I replace it by a letter of the alphabet and look for it and try all possible post choices. So how many different such strings are there? sigma power k, right? So, that is another <coughs> times m. In fact, this is slightly better because I can replace this by less than or equal to order sigma power k summation p i, which is equal to sigma power k times m. <coughs> but yeah, I can just go replace this by any of one of sigma characters, there are sigma power k choices, and look for exact match for that string here using my standard suffix tree thing and run it. Okay, these are all possible naive brute force solutions using suffix tree. Okay. Okay. So now what um, Cole et al. do is to Improve this to order two power k times m and then they improve. This is the part I have not actually carefully read this plus log log n plus So, whatever be the sigma, they are able to um, make it 2 power k using what is called uh, heavy light decomposition of the suffix tree. Okay? Something called heavy light decomposition, which is a general useful trick. Okay? There is a, I went through last night, I was going through a blog, there is somebody has written a, a four page on heavy light decomposition of trees, it's very useful. It comes up in some other geometry problems and so on. Okay. So, what is the goal? The goal is to get, I will tell you how to do this. And they actually improve it to uh, not instead of multiplicative factor, they actually do a plus 
plus log log n. Okay, I haven't carefully checked how this is this log log n is coming into the picture. We could probably you can look up, or we'll do this some other time. Um, So, like I said, there are two purposes to understand this very well. One is um, there is this SDSL library. Maintained by somebody called Simon Gog. This stands for, I think, succinct data structures library. Yeah. So, there um, they, he has not implemented this mismatch query. So, it will be nice to go and implement it, but to get there you need lot more understanding of succinct data structures to start with, because it is not the standard suffix tree, it is a very uh, space efficient version of suffix tree and that requires you to learn lot more things, okay. So that could be the next semester project or something. Uh, no, we will we'll keep going continuously and see where it goes. The second purpose as I said is that can we use this idea, I mean I do not see an easy way um, because yeah, so somehow this is, I mean this is also a wild card in online, that is what we are looking at. But can we use this um, FFT idea, the convolution idea, so I have this text then you convolute it with the pattern. No, no, it is nothing to do with the, the, the um, length n plus 1, it is this dynamic FFT, right. I don't know whether this is studied. This is an interesting problem. It just occurs to me is an interesting problem by itself. And if you make any progress on it, it could be even a good research direction and it could be applicable here. So, what is dynamic FFT or dynamic convolution? So, I given a vector A, pre process it. So that um, for every B, we can compute whatever it is called A convolution B in ideally something like this. Maybe you will spend a little bit more time, but so this is sort of an online FFT, right? A is given, you can somehow keep it in a very nice pre-processed form. I don't know how one of you might read this. Seems like a natural, interesting data structure kind of a question. Um, which could be useful for here. That, that's exactly what we want. thoughts on that yet. Okay. So, let us um, talk about this. How do they go from sigma power k to 2 power k, right?
So let us do this for one wild card and then I will generalize this ok. Assume you have only one wild card. So, what we will do is we will we'll take this suffix tree for t ok. So, the idea is simple. So, For every node, I am going to keep another thing. What am I going to do? So, this node has multiple children, right? This is a suffix tree. So, I have multiple children with different characters coming out, ok. I look at ok. So, this is called let us call this and this node as heavy child. So, this is x, why is it called a heavy child of x? Because the subtree rooted at x rooted at y. Hence number of leaves at subtree rooted at y is at least half of number of leaves of subtree rooted at x. <coughs> okay. So, in my suffix tree look at any node look at all its children and look at in, in the children's subtrees count the leaves, count the number of leaves. Actually not even half, what is it? Why should such a subtree exist? Okay, is it half or is this maximum? So, not half. This is the max. So, you look at number of leaves here, number of leaves here, number of leaves here, number of leaves here this has the maximum number of leaves among all the subtrees, then I call such a child of x as the heavy child of x ok. If there is a tie just break it arbitrarily ok. So, now there is something called heavy path decomposition. What is a heavy path decomposition? Which is 
Um, so you start from every node and keep taking heavy child until you get to a leaf. This is one such path. Okay. For every node, go to a heavy, heavier, heaviest child. Keep going, keep going, keep going until you hit a leaf. And this is one such path. Now take this path out of the tree. And do the same thing of the remaining tree. So now remaining tree may. This path, this path, this path, this may be a path, heavy path decomposition of the whole tree. Okay. Now, what the idea here is the following. What we are going to do is the following that so in the suffix tree, there is some symbol here. Okay. So now, um, what idea they have for this is now we are going to add another child to x. For every node we are going to do this. Okay. For every node, so for every node x, I am going to write another child with a wildcard character 5. So each leaf corresponds to a suffix right? in a suffix tree. Each leaf corresponds to a suffix, a root to leaf. You have seen suffix trees, right? Yeah. So each leaf corresponds to a suffix, correct? So this each of the leaves here correspond to a suffix, right? All the way from root, there is a suffix. So take these suffixes and create a try out of them here and put it here. So this is not on the heavy path. So this is a heavy child. Look at the leaves on the non-heavy children of X. Collect them all. Look at the suffixes. Cut this portion of the suffixes. The remaining suffixes, you put them all into a, a, a try like this. That's it. This is the structure. Okay. We are we are taking a suffix tree and with to every node in the suffix tree, I am creating another subtree to every node. What is that subtree? A subtree will have an edge like this with the five characters and it is a try of all suffixes which are not in the heavy path of these edges and I put them here. That is it. That is the data structure. Now I have to tell you how the query algorithm works. Question? Any question? No, if you get a wild card, I will go to both places. I will go here and here as well. Because this is capturing only the suffixes here. Okay, So I will not just go here because I am going to miss these suffixes. I might match this. I might actually match this character and I will get here. Exactly. That makes it 2 power k. Yeah, because it's a two-way branch, and I, and I go there and, and look for now P2 here. Once I get there, and again, I will take a, at that node, there will be a phi path, and there is a, the rest of the heavy path. This is the heavy edge, right? That makes it 2 power k. Now, right. I mean, I could have taken all the suffixes and put them here for that matter, right? Why did I not do that? That is, I mean, that will even avoid the 2 power k branch. 
why, why did I separate the heavy part? Because I want to improve on the space. Now I, I will argue the space, how much space have I used, right? Because I don't want to use too much space because one, As long as I do not end P1, yeah. as long as I do not encounter P, I'll just follow the paths as exactly. And once I hit that node, and once I'm hitting phi, either I go here or here on the heavy child and search both, and that makes it to power k. How much space have I used? This is where this heavy path decomposition property is used. If you look at a suffix, right, how many copies of the suffix are made. That's what I, I will argue, right? And then that, that gives you an estimate of the total number of nodes in the tree. The original suffix tree has order n nodes, right? Yes. Why? Because yeah, it has order n leaves. It has n leaves, but why does it have order n nodes? It actually also has order n nodes. Oh, so you're not sitting in the lecture room, is it? Oh, you're sitting in that side room where, uh, what's his name? Um, the technical person, what is his name? Uh, uh -huh, you're sitting in Vivek sir's room. Oh, I see, because behind you I see another class happening. Yeah, so suffix tree has n leaves. But potentially, it could be like this. This is one suffix. This is another suffix. This is another suffix. Like this. So then the suffix tree can have n square nodes. But the compressed suffix tree, the first immediate optimization you do is that whenever I have a node with single child, just compress it into a node and instead of putting the character, put the whole string in there, okay? This ensures that every node has at least two children, okay? If every internal node has at least two children, then any tree with such a property, any tree with n leaves, And at least two children for every internal node as at most some two n nodes. The original suffix tree with this little optimization has only order n nodes, okay? So now, what I will argue is that this tree has order n log n nodes, not too many more. And why is that? Because That's a property of heavy path decomposition, which is that um, in any root to leaf path, there are at most 
Angst, Longen, Differen, Thoughts of the Decomposition. remember we took the suffix tree broke it up into different paths heavy paths right now all I'm saying is if I just look at okay from this may be one path this may be one path Maybe another path. So, along with the path, the head of the path, I also make its parent part of the path. Okay, it just makes life easier. Then, if you look at any root to leaf path, then I am encountering here is one heavy path, here is another heavy path, two, here is another heavy path, three. So, the number of heavy paths I encounter from any root to leaf path turns out to be at most log n. I'm trying to see why that is. So, is it easy to verify? Can you see this? That's a definition that's based on the definition of the heavy child. That yeah, right, right. So, because so I start from the root, let's say this is one heavy path. Now, if I'm encountering another heavy path here, what does that mean? This subtree has fewer chill leaves than this subtree, right? Because that's why this was a heavy child. So, if you look at the number of leaves here, this has half of the whole thing, at most half of it. So, every time I go, go to a different heavy path, the number of leaves is going to be at most half half of what it was. So, now, the problem with that is that uh, if you look at the overall thing, this may not be half, but if you look at just these two, okay, so this, this requires an argument. Again, you know, look up heavy, heavy path decomposition or heavy light decomposition. It is a very nice general technique. And one of the properties of this is this. Heavy light decomposition is just take any tree, you are breaking it up into paths. Okay? It is a disjoint collection of paths, you are breaking the tree in a very systematic way using this heavy child property. And the property of such a decomposition is this. So, because of this, I want to argue that the total number of nodes you have in this tree is n log n. Okay, well, why is that? Because because I want to say that these leaves, how many copies of them will be? Uh, So, if you go, so if you look at one particular, let us see. So, this is my structure. So, 
So, let us look at one particular suffix, right. I want to claim that I have not copied it too many times. That is why the space is there are n suffixes and each suffix can appear at most log n times. So, the total number of nodes, total number of suffixes or leaves is n log n because of the other property it is order n log n. In fact, the, the reason we do even heavy path and all that to be careful about space, total number of nodes. Okay. Why is this? Because if you look at this leaf, going from this root to this leaf, I will come across at most log n different turns, heavy paths, right. So, suppose this is, this is one heavy path, then I moved on to, this is a different heavy path. That means, this heavy path continues like this, correct. So, that means, at this node, I will store this suffix, right, because this node will store all the suffixes which are not in the heavy path, correct. So, then maybe there is another heavy path which goes like this and then maybe this heavy path continues. So, this is a different heavy path. That means, this is another node where I will store Um, you know, this suffix, whatever that suffix here is. So, in particular, to get so in the route to this path, I will be encountering at most log n different heavy paths because of this property. So, whenever that turn happens, I will store it in the side tree, that suffix. So, this any suffix is stored only at most log n many copies. So, the space used is n log n, okay. Now, this is only for one wildcard character. For right, because here I would just go P1 and then phi and P2 here and here, that is it. Now, if I want one more wildcard character, then what we will do is that um, we will actually store another side tree here for every node here. So, basically we will take um, a heavy path decomposition of the side tree and for every non-heavy child, I will construct a node and put a phi here and store all of that and so on and so forth. So, the number of nodes will actually turn out to be n log power k or k minus 1 really. k is the number of wildcards I have and the query will exactly proceed like this and then p and then it will just do double and all that. Yeah, this is, this is. Now, I do not see I have to carefully check how they save this log log n. Um, improvement instead of 2 power k times m, they change it, they improve it to 2 power k plus m at a cost of a log log n. I have to see why that improvement is. And then there is a a term called OCC, you know, you understood what that means? This is the number of occurrences. So, if you go back to the standard suffix tree, what happens? How much, how much time does it take to find a match, exact match? Hmm? O of m to get to a node where there is a match. If you want to report all occurrences, what do you do? So, in O m time, you know whether the pattern exists or not. Suppose it exists and I want to know all the locations where it occurs, how do I do that? It depends how much you have understood suffix trees. Um, let us just do a small example. So, let us say it is. 
I will add a, a dollar. And what are my suffixes here? So I will be a dollar, a dollar, b, and then there is a b, 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 dollar, a. So this is suffix number one. <coughs> this is suffix starting at position two, five. B A dollar would be four. B B would be three. Yeah. So this is these are the suffixes. Number of not children, number of leaves. How do I how do I know that? How do I find it? One simple way is store it. Like pre-compute, pre-compute, and as a part of pre-processing, store at every node the number of leaves in that subtree. But that still only gives you the number. I want to know all the positions where it's appearing. What do I do? I only get the number, but I want to know where all it's appearing. Okay, at least you got it right that the, the leaves in that subtree is where I should go and get, they all give me the positions, right? Okay, so how do I do? So suppose I want to know how many occurrences of A so I go here and I know these leaves 1, 2, and 5. So what I do is the following. I come to that pattern. Then I do a BFS or a DFS of this subtree. And, and whenever I get to a leaf, I report that. Okay? But how much time? That adds to the time. How much time does it add? Suppose this is M, right? You spent order M, and then let's say it has some some L occurrences. So I'm going to be visiting this tree. There may be a lot of internal nodes here, right? Can there be a lot of internal nodes? Look at this property. Order of? Not N. In this subtree, it's even less than that. Order of L. Exactly. Which is good, right? It's order of number of occurrences. That nobody will complain. Right? If you want me to output all occurrences, you have to spend time proportional to the number of occurrences anyway. So that's okay. So that is the extra OCC you will see in this algorithm. So in standard suffix tree, it will be order M plus OCC, which is the number of occurrences. Because exactly this, M plus you do a tree traversal of this and pull out all these leaves. So in, in um, in the wildcard thing, you will see this running time, order 2 power k plus m plus log log n plus occurrences. This is the number of occurrences. Because you hit a match, then you have to go to its subtree and collect all the leaves. Right? So that's the time for uh, number of occurrences. Yeah, so that's it. So that's the uh, over, overview. Basically, the idea of heavy path decomposition, which has this property, 
and hence the space used is this. That is the space and then the running time instead of sigma power k you do 2 power k. Okay. Now, they do similar thing for text has wild card or you want mismatches, you want substitution. They look at them all in a generalized form, but I think the data structure is more or less the same. How the query proceeds is slightly different for different kind of queries, but uh, otherwise it's the same. Okay, so that's it. Um, so let me think about it and see whether there is some interesting answer to this. And um, no, otherwise, anyway, you can keep understanding this very well. Then we can go to succinct data structures and go to the library and implement. So that's one direction of work you can do. Or if there are any ideas on this direction, maybe you can just go and, you know, if, if this is possible, this solves the pattern as a wild card in this kind of an idea. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I have to rush. So. Um, yeah, absorb all of this and send me a mail in the middle of next week or so and then we can fix up another next meeting. Okay.